Now that most of our documentation is done, we need to place these drawings onto their sheets. Well, obviously we're gonna to need to be able to create some sheets in order to be able to do that. So there's really two different places where we can go about doing the sheet creation process. One way is up here underneath the ribbon, underneath view. So if you would select on view, we can then see that there's a big option over here for sheet composition. And it actually has several different options available to us as far as being able to create sheets, being able to center stuff on sheets and that kind of information. As far as being able to create one from scratch, we see that there's an option right here that says sheet and we could just select on that in order to be able to create our own sheet. So we'll go ahead and do that first. This will bring us to this new sheet dialog box. And what its real purpose is, is to be able to say, do you want to have a title block? And if so, which title block do you want to be able to select? Now, in this case, we only have one title block actually loaded in here. But if you're working on your own template and you've decided to go through the process, one of the things that you can do is you can actually create as many of these title blocks as you want. They could be for different parts of your company. They could be for different size sheets of paper. It all comes down to you and which size sheets or which size title block you want to be able to use and leverage. And it all can show up here on the list. In this case, we're going to pick the only one that we have available, which is the size E1, and click on OK. Now that we've done that, here we can see our default title block. And if we zoom over here, we can see that there's certain properties associated with this particular title block. One of the things it says is that this is sheet S.2. It's possible depending on the condition of your drawing when you inserted this in, it could have said S.1 or S.0. It kind of depends on whatever the last sheet it is that was created. The next sheet on the list, that's the one it's going to display. When I was first setting up these drawing files, the last one that I did was S.1. And that's the reason why this is S.2. That being said, this is not the naming scheme that I personally want to do. So instead of this being S, as in structure, point two, I want to make this S.101. So, easy enough, select on the title block, click on that blue piece of text that will show up then, and we'll just make this S101. And then just click somewhere out in space in order to be able to finish that up. Now, when we made that change, over here underneath our project browser, and we'll scroll down here to find our sheets, so we'll click on the little plus next to the word sheets, and what we're going to find is S.101, and it says unnamed. Well, it got the 101 from what we just typed in. You can see here where it says unnamed. Well, if we decide to click here, click on it again, we can now type in anything that we want to call this. In this particular case, let's go ahead and call this plans. This could be first floor plan, second floor plan. But in general, I'm just calling this plans for right now. And you can see that it automatically updates underneath the project browser. Now, another way that we could go about creating a sheet, it's actually the same process, it's just in a different location, is if we find sheets underneath the project browser over here on the left-hand side. If we do it this way, then we can just right-click on the word Sheets, click on New Sheet, and then select the appropriate title block once again off of the list. And we'll click on OK to that. Now, one of the things you'll remember that I said just a moment ago is that when I went through the original creation process of this particular exercise, most likely the last sheet that I had created was S.1. And I knew that because S.2 was the default one that popped up. We can actually see that kind of occurred here as well. Because if we look here, we can see that S.102 happens to be the new number that it gave to this new sheet by default. It did the next one in the sequence after the 101 that we just typed in. Now, I don't want this to be 102. I want this to be called structural or S.301. Now, technically, I could do that over here, but I also want to point out that the properties related to the sheet that you're currently working on also shows up up here underneath properties. So if instead of renaming it down here or renaming it over here, one of the options that I would have actually would be to come up here and then rename it up here. I'm going to just rename it from here, S.301. So highlight it, type in the information, and you can just move your mouse out into the screen and you'll see it automatically updates on the title block as well as in your project browser. As far as the rest of the information over here is concerned, it's kind of more of the same, quite frankly. All you have to do is be able to select on the title block, click in the appropriate area. In this case, 
This is the owner information. And I'm just going to type in lynda.com and click. As far as project name, I'm just going to call this structure because this is a Revit structure course. And then click off. You can see this is currently unnamed and says unnamed over here. And just like before, if we decide to change this information, before we said plan, this time I'm going to call this one sections. I'm going to click over here in space. And finally, let's go ahead and fill in some of this information down here as well. And we can do that by just clicking down here where it has such things as the project number. If you want to put in today's date or a number or whatever the case may be, I'm just putting the 012012 in here. As far as uh, date goes, you can put whatever today's date happens to be. In this case, I'm just going to put this information in the title block. Drawn by, feel free to put your initials in. I'm going to put mine. Checked by, once again, you can fill this in with any information that you want. I'm just going to type in Linda here in the checkbox. Now that we've gotten to this point, I'll go ahead and zoom out. All that information has been updated there. Let's check S.101 and see what information is showing up on it. Now that we've done that, we can see that such things as the date and project number are showing up over here. We're also seeing that the client name, in this case, we're kind of calling this just lynda.com, and then the project that this is, which is structure, is now showing up over here. Also, this still says plans. It didn't override it with the information such as sections because, well, that's not what this sheet is about. Now that we've went through this process, really the only thing that's going to be left for us will be to go through the process of putting views onto our sheets.